Hey there, this is Rebecca. Today we're going to cover the Bohr-Rutherford diagram, also known as the Bohr diagram. I'm going to teach you four simple steps to mastering how to draw Bohr diagrams using two examples. And I'm going to teach you the key information that you need to know how to read on the periodic table to be able to successfully draw out these Bohr diagrams. At the end of this video, you should be able to comprehend how to draw out the diagrams, and with some practice, I have no doubt that you will be able to master any element on the periodic table. So let's get started. Previously, you may already have been aware of the atomic composition and what an atom, modern day atom, looks like. It comprises of a positively charged nucleus that's noted in black here, electron orbits with red dots that are symbolic of electrons, and a outer circle that tells us that this is an atom. Truthfully speaking, if I were to draw out all of these diagrams using this kind of drawing technique, I would be so lost because the electrons that are orbiting around this nucleus, I would have no idea really which one belongs closer, which one should be further, and how, how to really draw this out in a way that I don't get my circles confused. Luckily, Bohr-Rutherford model helps us with this by converting a 3D model into a 2D one. Here again, the nucleus, with the, like the black one, is represented by the element symbol and a circle around it. The different shells of electrons are noted by these circles that orbit around the nucleus, and this tells us the atomic uh, diagram on how to really understand how many electrons reside at every shell. The Bohr-Rutherford diagram, we learned that electrons orbit around the nucleus, on the periodic table, there are two pieces that you need to know. The first piece is that periods tell us the number of shells. Groups tell us the number of valence electrons. So again, periods tell us the number of shells. The number of shells means the number of electron shells that orbit around the nucleus. Groups tell us the number of valence electrons. You must be thinking, what is valence? And valence is the outermost shell. So we can draw Bohr diagrams for each element on the periodic table by knowing what period and what group that that element is found. Here's the periodic table. One key thing that I want you to remember um, is that the periodic table from now on does not include the transition metal section. The first piece is that a period is also known as rows. So imagine the period here. The first period comprises of hydrogen and helium. The second period comprises of elements lithium, beryllium, boron, carbon, nitrogen, oxygen, fluorine, neon. And then the third period, the fourth, etc. A column in, on the periodic table is also known as a group. So the first column here is known as group one, second, group two, Group three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Again, like I just mentioned, for now, we're gonna forget that these particular groups exist. So these are also known as the transition metals and we're not getting, gonna get into that today. The four steps to mastering a Bohr-Rutherford diagram, we're gonna start with the first, which is draw the nucleus with the element name inside. Second is draw in the number of shells. Third, fill in the valence electrons. And lastly, fill in all the other inner shell electrons. One key thing I want you to remember is that the first shell only contains two electrons. That's because if we look at period one, period one only has hydrogen and helium. That's only two, right? The maximum um, atomic number here is two, which means that there's only two electrons. The next period is period two, and period two contains eight electrons. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. 
and then every period after that also contains eight electrons. So again, the first shell only has two electrons, and every shell after that has eight electrons maximum. So now take, let's take a look at an example. We're going to first start with the oxygen. The first oxygen example is that oxygen is located on group 6 and period 2. Again, group tells us the number of valence electrons, so because it's group 6, there are 6 valence electrons. Period tells us the number of shells, because it's on period 2, there are 2 shells. If we go back quickly, we should see, again, oxygen is found in group 6, right, and it's found in row 2, period 2. Using the four-step method, we first start with drawing the nucleus with the element name inside. So oxygen, the symbol for oxygen is O. We draw a circle around the O to show the nucleus. The second step is to draw the number of shells. We know that it's on period two, which means that it has a total number of two electron shells. Third, fill in the valence electrons. We know oxygen is found in group six, which means that it has six valence electrons. So we can draw six electrons now, one, two, three, four, five, six. Lastly, fill in all the other inner shell electrons. So we do know that there's only two shells and the first shell can only contain a maximum of two electrons. Again, you can't open up to the next shell if the inner shell has not been filled. So the assumption is starting with the valence electrons which may or may not be a full shell, the outer shell. Every shell that's inside of it must be a full shell. So it means that when we're drawing the inner shells, it must be full. And so the inner shell is only the first shell in this case, and the first shell can only contain two electrons, and hence we draw the two electrons in as noted in blue. Now, if you have some time, I would highly recommend for you to take a quick pause Use this method that you just learned and try drawing out a Bohr diagram for sodium and then continue on with this video to double check whether or not you have drawn the diagram correctly. The second piece is looking at the sodium Bohr diagram. Sodium is located on group one and period three. If we take a look, quick look again, this is in group one and period three, row number three. We know that group one means that it has one valence electron in its outermost shell, and there are a total of three shells. Using the four-step method, again, we draw the nucleus with the element name inside. Sodium has the element symbol Na. We draw in the number of shells. There are three total shells, so one, two, three. Next piece, we fill in the valence electrons. We know there's only one valence electron, so there's only one electron that's on the third shell. Next, we draw in the other inner shell electrons. We know for a fact that there are two shells. The second shell is not the first one, so we know that the second shell must be a full shell and it could hold a maximum of eight electrons. So here, as noted in blue, there are eight electrons. The first shell closest to the nucleus can only contain a maximum of two electrons, and so here we see that we draw in two in this case. So this is the full Bohr diagram of a sodium element. If you've gotten this correct, pat yourself on the back. Again, if you found this video useful, it would truly mean the world to me if you can just click a like, a comment, or a subscribe. Thank you.